An effective design process is to first build the solution in the simulator. Each of the projects in this class will have a starter file, and this is the starter file for this module. We'll begin by making sure we're in the simulator. So we hit Options, Debug, and we see that we are in simulation mode. OK. All right. As we saw, we are going to input from port D and output also to port D. So we'll initialize it. We're using port D, so we'll turn on the port D clock. After we turn on the clock, we must wait three or five bus cycles for the clock to stabilize. We're using port D0 as an output, so we will set its direction register to 1. We're using port D bit 0 as an input, so we will set its direction register to 0. The regular port functions do not have alternate uses. So we'll turn off the alternate. These are digital, so we have no analog. The P control register, we are going to clear the we're going to clear the bits for PD3 and PD0. Again, we don't want the alternative function. We want the regular digital output. And we will enable PD3 and PD0. All right, this is the initialization that we do for virtually every parallel port. So now let's design the design loop. I think an effective debugging process is to add variables to assist in the debugging. So we'll add two variables here just for the purpose of debugging. Okay. All right, what are the steps of our system? We'll first begin with the input. Again, the input is in port D. You gotta spell it right. The input is in port. Okay, what are the steps? The steps are to first input, which is in port D, G P I O underline port D, underline data, underline R. The bit we're interested in, remember, is bit 0. So we will mask or select bit 0. Okay. So this step will bring in to port D bit 0 stored in in. So we can think about in will be 0 if not pressed, and 1 if pressed. Next, we will convert the input to the output. We're going to use the exclusive OR operation to convert the input 0 to an input 1 and the input 1 to an input 0. And now that's in bit 0. We need it in bit 3, so we'll move it over three spots. And what we have here is the variable out is going to be 8 if not pressed. That'll turn the light on. And 0 if the switch is pressed. And the last step is to perform the actual output. So we'll store the output here, P G P I O underline port D underline data underline R equals output. All right. We've written our program. Next we'll compile it. So we pick project build to see if we have any errors. Uh, no errors. And next, we will simulate it by hitting the debug button right here. 
And so now we're in the debugger and we can look at the operations. Okay. This window here will show us uh, port D. So we'll single step our first time through. So there's the single step, single step, single step. We see the clock is now on. We waited our three cycles. We set the direction register. You see the direction register is eight. We turned off bits in the alternative function, the analog multiplexer, and the P control. And then the last step of initialization is to enable the digital output. And now we're in the loop. This simulation here says the switch is not pressed. Okay. To see the variable in, we will add it to the watch window. So we will look at the watch window here by adding it to the watch window. And so we can see our input and output down here in the watch window. And we see that uh, because the switch was not pressed, the variable in was a zero. The next line will calculate out equal to eight. And the third line will make the LED on. So switch is off, LED is on. If we run through the program with the switch on, now the input is equal to a one, it calculates an output of zero and the switch is, and the LED is off. We can run this in full speed mode by hitting the go button. And now we see if the switch is on, the LED is off, and if the switch is off, the LED is on. Okay, we're done with simulation.